So it's a new year and it's a new Raspberry Pi. Now we're at the Pi 5, so that was released back in October. I've decided to do a new build and this is going to be running Open Plotter 4. Just while I'm doing my little bit of an introduction, the Pi's just booting up in the background there on a standard SD card. And you can see it's really quite quick. So one of the improvements that they've made on the board this year is they've built their own chip between the CPU and the other interface parts of the, of the, of the Raspberry Pi. And it really has made quite a big difference. So much so that I was thinking of not actually getting a um, SSD card attached to mine this time. I have decided to do that in the end because I think it's better in terms of longevity of, of the device. But you can see just from the general running and the way that the Pi is responding, it's quicker again. And it's been quicker every year. There's also a new power management chip on board, which allows you to grab some data from that as well. So you can see how the power is being distributed around the board and, and what the voltages are. That, along with changes to the chipset, also mean that the board is actually more efficient. So when it's not doing all of the processing, we should actually see some lower power draws from the device as well, which is great if you're running it from 12 volt batteries like we do. And finally, around heat management. So from the things that I've seen online about how it handles uh, heat and how it distributes the heat, with it being more efficient, it seems to be able to handle that a lot better. So generally, the Pi is now running cooler than it has done in the past. So with all that, my plan is to run a Pi 5 with an NVMe base, so that's where the SSD card is going to be, and then on top of that is going to sit the MacArthur hat, and that's how I'm going to interface into all of my boat electronics, as I've done with my Raspberry Pi 4. I'm not going to put this one into an argon case like I have in the past, so I'm just going to run it without all of that and run it with the active heatsink, because again, they've now got a, an active heatsink that you can buy and it plugs straight into the board, and that's temperature controlled, a bit like what the argon case you should do as an add-on. So I've gone for the NVMe base from Pi Moroni. There's a couple of nice features about this. First of all, obviously, they give you lots of different size screws and things so that you can connect right through and also mount a hat on top. This base does sit underneath so that it means that you can still mount a hat onto the GPIO pins, which were one of the things, obviously, I wanted to do. One of the other nice things, and you'll see it in a, in a minute, is that the cable that connects to the PCIe slot, because we don't use USB anymore to connect these SSDs like it did in the Argon case, now that that cable goes from the Pi onto the board, it's actually slightly offset so that you can still get to the SD card. And one of the things that I've seen with some other boards is that that covers the SD card and then it's quite tricky to get that out. It doesn't do that with this board, so it's really quite nice. So we've just added the small screws and the standoffs to the board there, and now it's ready to actually click the SSD in. Now this will take different size SSDs, so you can have a look on the website as to which ones it will take, but I've decided to get one with the kit. All you need to do then is you just simply slot that into the base, and there's a small retaining screw at the top that holds it in place, and that's it, it's ready to go. So here's a quick look at the board. I mean, there's a few small differences, but again, they're just minor, so we won't go through them. There's lots of information online about what's changed. And what I have been doing is I've been running mine in the Raspberry Pi case, which is also fan controlled now, and it comes with a small heatsink. That's been doing pretty well, but we're gonna upgrade now, and here's the new active heatsink that's gonna go on. And this actually covers a few more components on the board than just the CPU. Um, and I'll come back to something that I've noticed. If you leave the power on with this board, this heatsink gets warm, so there is some power draw happening when the Pi is in standby. As I say, we'll come back to that later. To mount the heatsink, all you do is just simply peel this off and stick it to the board with the two small clips. Just lines up and it's a simple push through and it's attached to the board. Next, connect the fan header and that's all you need to do. So now we need to connect the two boards together. And this, as I say, this is PCIe. So the small cable that they give you is labeled and on the cable, it says one end for the Pi and one end for the base. What you have to do is just lift the small catch up and try and push the cable as far down as you, as you can into the slot before clicking the, the catch back down. It's a bit of a fiddly process to try and record, but hopefully I've, I've captured that there, that that's pushed right down and then you click the catch down and that's it. It just locks the cable straight in place. You repeat the same process on the base, lifting the catch, sliding the cable in as far as it would go, drop the catch, and then fold the whole unit back onto itself, and that's it. You can now add the fixing screws to hold the base to the Raspberry Pi. It's then a case of powering things back up, making a couple of small changes, and copying 
the operating system from the SD card across to your new NVMe base. And then just finally, you can see how it's going to sit with the MacArthur hat on top. So that's the three devices all stuck together. So across to the Pi now, we head over to accessories and load the SD card copier. And you can see here that it's already detected the base. So we've got the drive, that's all good and working. We're gonna select the SD card and we're gonna select the new NVMe base. And yes, we do want to copy that across. So we're gonna click yes. And now it's gonna start copying the data from one to the other and surely it'll be finished. It doesn't take very long. So just before you boot from this new drive, you're going to have to make a couple of changes. And here we're going across to the boot config. Head down to the very bottom of this file. And as you can see here, where, the, where it starts with the word or, just underneath that, we're going to add another line. So this command makes the Pi run at Gen 3, which is the fastest PCIe standard that it can run at. So we need to add that line into the following file here, and then we're going to save this file. Next, we're going to edit the Raspberry Pi configuration, and this is going to tell the Pi that we've got an NVMe base and we want it to boot from it rather than the SD card. It's in Advanced Options, Boot Order, and then select NVMe USB Boot Mode. Once it's changed that configuration mode, it's going to ask you if you want to reboot. Now, I wouldn't. I would actually shut down the Pi, remove your SD card, and then power it up, because otherwise you're not going to catch it. So I'd select no to this, and then reboot it manually. So this is its first boot now, booting from the SSD drive, and you can see straight away that it's quicker. anything really from browsing the web to running sort of signal K in the background it just seems to respond really well and you can see in the top right hand corner that the CPU usage is really quite low so it'll be interesting to see how it runs all the other things that I want to run on the boat. So OpenBlotter 4 is not quite ready yet they're still working through some of the applications because some of the things have changed in terms of how the Raspberry Pi functions and how the underlying OS works as well. So one of the things that I wanted to try and do with this time round was actually use one of the USB dongles from OCharts. As you know, the area that we sail in, we can't get charts available online. And if I end up messing with the Pi or rebuilding something, I have to then request those charts again. With the dongle, you attach the charts and the subscription to that small device, and it uses that as the key. So this time round, I've decided to purchase that key and now go through the process of installing it. So the first thing we're going to need is to fire up OpenCPN and download the plugin that allows us to connect to that. So if you hit the Preferences button, what you can see here is that the USB has already been detected. It's just listed just a little bit lower down there. What I used to have to do was create this system key. You don't need to do that with the USB key. It automatically recognises it and allows you to just log in. So the next step is to head over to the chart section. And as you can see here, the key is detected again. Now we just need to log in to the store and it'll automatically refresh, show me the charts that are available and allow me to download them. With the increased speed of the SSD, obviously all of this is much quicker than it was on an SD card. And shortly after that, the charts are installed. A couple of agreements to agree to, and we're in business. As you can see again, it just zips through all of these really, really quickly. And that's all, I've not cut that, that's all in real time. Also the panning and the zooming round on the Pi 5 is really nice and smooth really impressed so far as i say we need to get some boat data in there to see how it functions then but so far so good so the next steps are to get av nav up and running because that's another package that i like a lot um, and i use a lot on board so i'm going to do the same now i'm going to try and utilize the same usb dongle and license key so it doesn't download another instance of that and use my spare chart pack so we'll have a look at setting that up now So when AVNAV loads, it's the menu on the right you're looking for, and it's this particular icon here with the nine squares in it. That's the one you need to click. You're then looking for this icon, which is the OCharge provider application or window, and then you're going to click on Get Fingerprint for Dongle. You then need to head back to the OCharge website and click this Request button here. That then requests a link that you then get sent to you via email, 
and then you'll load that file onto the charts provider page that you can see there. After some time, it'll then unpack all of the data, just like OpenCPN did, and away you go. OpenPlotter 4 is in progress at the moment, and at the time of recording, you can see how far they've got through the various apps here. Most of them are still in beta, so there's still maybe the odd bug in there, but my experience has been really, really positive. There's a couple of apps that I'm particularly waiting for, the I2C app and also the GPIO app. And then pretty much my installation will work as it did before. If you head over to the Open Marine forum and you find this post, you'll see the progress that they're making. This, this post is regularly updated. There's a link there to download the current version of code. You are able to update the apps within the platform itself, but sometimes they do make some quite fundamental changes. So it may be that you have to re-image at a later point, but you could always do a backup, but just bear that in mind. I've been having a bit of a play with the Pi 5, so I've got it all nicely stacked up, as you can see there. So it's the hat sits on top, um, and then I'm going to fix it somewhere here when I've actually finished playing, but just sort of getting to grips with everything. My um, old Pi 4 is just sat there, and this is what I say, is I've just been playing with a Sentia ESP, but I'll show that. I'll do some screenshots rather than filming it on here, but everything's working as, as it did before, um, working really well. Um, some of the things aren't working yet, so you can't do the I2C stuff, so this doesn't work yet, so our barometer and our temperature sensor, humidity, that doesn't work. Um, outside temperature sensor doesn't work, so the one wire stuff isn't quite ready yet, uh, so we'll just wait for that to, to be um, updated and then we can use that. But other than that, oh and CTOR, but we, we're using um, NMA2. Enemy A2000 now, so we don't we're not using CTOR, but that that's not quite ready yet. But everything else on this board, obviously, it's got the power module in. It's powering a Pi 5 and an SSD underneath there, and it's working great. So no complaints from me. So we'll leave this video here. I want to do a little bit more testing before I show you anything further. There are a few power management um, features that you can enable, and also some interesting data that you can get out of the Pi 5 board. So we'll show you that next time. And also I'll show you how to update OpenPlotter and run through the new features as they also come online. We'll see you next time.